Here we go. I think we're live now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Laura Freeman here with Art Oddity, and I have with me today our June Spotlight artist, James Swanson. So James Swanson is an accomplished painter and signature member of the American Impressionist Society, Oil Painters of America, and National Oil and Acrylic Society. He has won numerous awards for his paintings, and he also shares his incredible talent through his classes and workshops. James, thank you for being here today. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm so happy and excited that you have agreed to teach a workshop for Art Oddity and be our June Spotlight Artist. Um, I instantly fell in love with your art. The first time I saw it, I was like, that's it. <laughs> I gotta have them on. And um, so tell us about yourself and your journey as an artist. Uh, well, let's see. Thank you uh, for having me again. Uh, let's see, I started off in college as a, uh, like everybody does, as, as a, I wanted to be a, 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 a ranger, uh, it was a tree forest ranger and stuff. So I went to a University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point, where it's really known for uh, natural resources. And there I found out that I am not a very good tree person. <laughs> and I don't know trees. I can't I know nothing about trees and I could not remember trees. So I made the quick U-turn and went to art. Um, I had a brother, uh, John, who was a, uh, he was teaching at uh, Columbus College of Art and Design in Ohio. And he got me a scholarship there to go, go paint there, work there and stuff. Um, and through there, I became an illustrator, came to Chicago, uh, you know, and be, had 30 years of illustration experience, make, doing all kinds of commercial art and stuff. And then uh, at one time I decided I was gonna take a giant pay cut and become a fine artist. And <laughs> now I, and uh, so I started painting, 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 oil painting. I really always loved oil painting in college, but, uh, Back then, you 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 know everything was had to be done by fax or stuff. There was no internet or anything like that. Uh, so to be able to get a piece done and send it to a client, stuff you you know you had to find a quick medium to to work in. And I always I just did pastels for years as a commercial artist. And then basically I kind of just worked my way back into doing uh, oils. And uh, yeah, I haven't looked back. I just love uh, painting and oils. Uh, I think the medium is just so forgiving and, uh, you know, it just comes natural to, to me. So I just love, love painting it. So, uh, well, I, I can tell that, you know, you have a lot of experience and that it does come naturally to you. Your work is absolutely gorgeous. And, um, you know, it, I can see a piece behind you of, is that one of your golden retrievers? Yeah, this is the uh, this is Atticus. Uh, he uh, he's pretty much the whole reason I started painting dogs again. Um, when he he passed right before the pandemic hit, and uh, you know, and I just you know felt really bad about it and stuff. He just got a little tumor and just passed really quickly, and so I just wanted to pay tribute to tribute tribute to him again, and then. Uh, did a, like a month long of painting a dog a day of people who send me in, uh, sent me in photos of their dogs and stuff. And I kind of made, uh, you know, took the paintings and sold them back to them. And then I took the money and I gave it to a charity. And then, uh, you know, I also did uh, workshops and stuff like that. So I kind of made it kind of interesting. I tried to make something out of it and uh, turned it around for me. Uh, well, that's a beautiful but, tribute. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And I think that's how I first came across you too. I think I saw uh, some of your dog portraits that you were doing and pulled me right in. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, they're they're just totally different than uh, anything else. Even doing people portraits and stuff, uh, there is just so, many, so much more going on uh, in 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 a dog and. Uh, with the hair and stuff and being able to capture the fur and, and everything. It's just, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to take comprehend. 
every time you paint one. And they're all so different. Oh my God. There are so many different breeds. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. so what words of wisdom do you have for, um, for new artists, new or aspiring artists? Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, well, don't, don't take the easy way. <laughs> I would tell you, it's never going to work. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people out there and who do decent work and they, they're on social media like crazy. They got a thousand people, thousands of people following them and stuff, but the work just doesn't uh, add up yet. Uh, one of the things I would say, really, really paint, work, work, work you know, really get that, get that amount of, uh, you need to get a lot of work underneath it before you, uh, need to, you know, jump out there and stuff. And one of the best ways is to really see somebody working. And I mean, like for workshops and do workshops and stuff, because you can read a book and look at all the pictures and things like that. But to see a, somebody who crafts their work and knows what they're doing, uh, really, really, embeds itself in your head and you can really get you know so much better quicker uh and that's what i would i would say really think about doing workshops uh even though they're expensive and stuff but they do save you time uh, i mean you're still gonna have to put in the work you've still got to really push make paintings and stuff mm -hmm. uh i have i've done thousands of paintings now and uh it's you know, and I'm still trying to learn, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing. But. I think that's a beautiful thing about art is, you know, we're always still striving to achieve and become better. You know, even, even you, with all of your experience, you just said it, you know, you're still trying and reaching. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you have to, I mean, there's, if you hit the pinnacle already you're just gonna it's gonna be boring and you'll never you know your work will just die you got to keep striving to know that there's still something better for you every time I, I i paint something i go this is the best painting i've ever done <laughs> so every time i do that every time i attack something it's like this is going to be the best painting i've ever done and you know never, it doesn't work out but you know <laughs> you got to keep word thinking that in your head Right. You got to have that challenge there all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really is. Yeah. And I, I think you said it beautifully too, you know, with workshops, um, you can learn so much from workshops. That's what I've, I've come to realize is, you know, in the past six months I've been taking workshops and I've learned more in those six months than I did through my, my college education in art because it's so focused on, you know, the techniques and the application and, and really following the artist and hearing what they're thinking while they're doing it. And it's, you know, it's a great way to learn. Oh, it's, it's probably, yeah, it is well worth it. I would, I would think, I mean, I did one, I even take them, still take them. I took one with Kali Wisson uh, a couple of years ago and that the stuff he said is still filtering through my head. And stuff and it's still coming through uh my paintings and you know and um you know it's just you know something you really should look at so. absolutely yes i will yeah. i will go check them out for sure um <laughs> so what is your workshop on art oddity going to be about it's going to be in june on um, june 14th and 15th so <laughs> what is it going to be well uh i it'll probably be a portrait dog portrait i'll do that for you guys uh i'm not sure what kind of dog yet i'll probably throw out a throw out something to everybody and see who wants a he wants a dog painting and stuff okay. and, and uh you know it half the thing is i want to be once <laughs> it has to be a good shot i get a lot of photos from clients and stuff and uh you know the, the photos they send me they're not photographers and they just send me a nice not even a good photo <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, it's really hard to paint from a bad photo. So yeah. it's this, this week, I'll be looking for a good photo to try and impress you with. Awesome. I can't <laughs> Something wait. It'll be okay. fun to paint with. Yeah. Yes, I'm excited. Okay. And what kind of supplies will people need? They'll need everything. Uh, okay. 
Uh, well, I work in oils, and I'll give you a few tips right now about oils and, and there are my stuff I use. Uh, one of the things I use, let me hook up and grab it. Oh, of course, it's right behind me. I use, I use these Centurion panels. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Centurion okay. panels and stuff. They are uh, linen, oil primed linen. Uh, I get them at uh, Jerry's Artorama. And uh, those are like, I've uh, been hold my staple of painting uh, panels and stuff. I get them. They're cheap, very cheap, cheaper than the ones you get at like at other art supply stores. So I'd go for the, that'd be one of my big tips for uh, supplies to get. Uh, are those kind of panels. Those are very good. Uh, I'll need, you'll need oils, of course. Uh, I use uh, Rembrandt oils. Uh, I got uh, titanium white. I use cad yellow light. I use cad red light. I use cad orange. Those are my cadmium colors. And cadmium colors, even though they, you know, they talk about those guys being, uh, you know, poisonous and stuff like that. The amount of cadmium in these paints, you'd have to eat 17 tubes of paint to get cadmium poisoning. And <laughs> I've never eaten 17 tubes of paint. <laughs> paint. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I got yellow ochre. I have uh, alizarin crimson or rose matter. I have, uh, I have terra rosa. I have cobalt blue hue. Cobalt blue hue. Uh, that's a special color of mine. I get it from Utrecht. Uh, that's my blue I use. Uh, and then I got Brigler Burnt Sienna Burn Number and Phalo Green. I'm looking at my palette back here trying to uh -huh. <laughs> color. And also I have a little bit of King's Blue on there. So, uh, yeah, a, a lot of colors, but, uh, you know, and I don't use all the colors in every painting and stuff, but it's not, I always, that's just the way I set it up. Even if I don't use the colors, I put them out there. Uh, then you got to have some nice bristle brushes, and then you need, you need some synthetic brushes. Uh, I have rosemary brushes, really nice ivory, long handled ivory uh, uh, rosemary brushes that are still kind of going. The lovely thing about these guys is that the, the tip they keep, you know, you get such a sharp edge on them and stuff, and that just holds like crazy. Those are fabulous. I love those. Uh, um, other things you're going to need, uh, need, uh, I use safflower oil for my, uh, oil painting medium and stuff. I did, I, I, my studio is in my basement of my house here and, uh, I don't want anything toxic and really deadly in my house that, and stuff. And I cannot stand linseed oil anymore. <laughs> linseed oil just stinks like, God, it stinks so bad. So I use saf safflower oil and safflower oil is the oil binder for almost a lot so many painting paints right now uh, and it doesn't yellow like linseed okay. oil does over time and uh, i use that and i i don't use it as you know a ton of it but i do do like that as my painting medium uh also i clean my brushes uh i don't have any solvents in the house i use baby oil to clean my brushes mm -hmm. and i've been cleaning my brushes i clean my brushes with baby oil for you know 10 years now and I have not washed my brushes since for three years. Oh, wow. I don't wash my brushes. I just wipe them out with baby oil. And, you know, and I go back and paint the, I paint a lot though. I don't, I don't need to keep changing stuff. I have a lot of brushes up here. <laughs> <laughs> so. Do you use different brushes for different, like do you have certain brushes that are specific to blues or greens or, you know, different colors or do you, uh, I, I go basic, more basic. I go dark, dark or light. And stuff. Okay. I use, yeah. I and I just keep wiping them out as I go and stuff. Um, that's how I get the such nice color harmony. I just I don't really clean my brushes out. I just kind of wipe them out, and that way, whatever dark whatever paint I have mixes with the other paints, and you get a natural blend, and you get natural uh, colors and stuff out of that. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. I love that. I'm not going to clean my brushes anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I mean, it depends. I, I paint every day. And yeah. so 
I don't have to clean them totally out, you know. I so yeah, I, I and they just wear out. They just wear out, and I throw them out and get, grab some more. So yeah, one of my biggest new kind of things I have though is I use these like two inch brushes. Oh, let me here it goes. These two inch crap. These are like craft brushes, uh, and uh, if they get. I, I go for this is kind of synthetic, but they get they get this line that's just so sharp and it stays sharp, uh, and I, it's great for drawing uh, it's, it's, and starting a painting. And I love those because they just they fit in your hand like this, and you can't really go like this to pay. So it keeps you from using it as a pencil and start to noodle things. You hold it like this, and you got to shoot work big, okay big strokes. So I like that. That's a great brush. It's a, it's, awesome. it's also by Royal Ling Nickel. I get them at, you can get them at, uh, where is it? Joint Fabrics and stuff like that. So that's okay. one, another great brush. But I think that my newest little gadget though, the newest little gadget is very, very cool. It is a, uh, I got it out of my, my kitchen and stuff. This is a Betty Crocker. See, it's a Betty Crocker spatula. Yes. And what I do, yeah, yeah. You can get them, you get these at the dollar store for a buck. And they have two ends on them. And basically, I took just took a scissors, and I trimmed off the edges here and gave me a couple different uh, angles. And the coolest thing about these things is what they do. Uh, usually, in painting, you start you paint darks to light and stuff like that. And for me, when I get my darks in, I usually try not to go back to them and stuff because they just don't go in. Uh, I paint wet into wet a lot, and they don't. The colors don't they just blend i can't get that really solid uh black or dark in there again and this thing is like a needed eraser for oil painters and i can just take and just take it straight down and it'll just takes the paint right off there it takes me down to bare canvas so it's really great i mean i yeah. it, i when i whenever i paint flowers or anything else i don't have to worry about the backgrounds i can just take take this thing out and it works great so this All is right, now I'm going to have to go start cutting my my uh, spatulas. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. My my wife hasn't found out yet, so she doesn't <laughs> use them. She doesn't usually use them that much. So awesome. Well, anyway. I'm going to open it up and see if anybody has any questions. I know we've got some people watching, so um, you guys can type them in the comments if you have questions for James. And <laughs> I'm going to drop in uh, the link to join James's workshop, which will be. June 14th and 15th on the Art Audigy membership. So um, I'm going to drop that link in while we wait and see if any questions are coming in. Well, there should be tons of questions. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so goofy. Uh, so. All right. Let's see. I'm trying to find. I always have to come back over here to drop the link in. Okay. All right, so um, let's see. Let me come back over here to StreamYard now. Okay. Um, oh, Lynette would like to know about the awards you have won and your credentials. <laughs> Lynette, that's <laughs> – thank you, Lynette. Uh, my credentials, my awards. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, win awards. I uh, a lot of times uh, you get into, I've gotten into a lot of big, uh, big competitions and stuff. That's usually what I do. I don't really, I'm not really go out to galleries and try to get into galleries. I'm kind of like, like going into painting competitions to, to get my name known. And uh, so I get, a lot, I do a lot of uh, OPA, uh, Oil Painters America's competitions, try to get in those. And that's how you become like a signature member of all these things. You got to get in into so many shows in such a, in the short period of time. And if they'll give you a signature membership, but then you just got to keep paying your dues and you can keep your membership, <laughs> your signature membership. So I got to remember, keep remembering that. Um, yeah. Uh, my, some of my best ones, my favorite, uh, uh, 
biggest award, I think, was probably from this art museum down in uh, Terre Haute, uh, uh, Indiana, uh, the Swope uh, Art Museum. Uh, I, they had a show, and um, one of my paintings was judged you know, best painting of the show. And they bought the painting and kept the painting and stuff. So it's in an art museum. My painting is in an art museum. And that's really, really probably my biggest uh, accomplishment is getting a painting in an art museum. <laughs> Not, you know, I can get paintings in galleries. I can get paintings in people's houses and stuff. But, uh, you know, get something that's going to be there uh, alongside a lot of, you know, Georgie Bellows and some other, you know, famous, famous artists and stuff. you got a painting in there. You know, I don't know if it's on their walls. It's probably down their basement, but at least I know it's there, and it makes me feel <laughs> great. It makes you feel like you accomplished something. So. Absolutely, that's that's quite the accomplishment for sure. Yeah. I want to see that painting now. I'm gonna have to go visit their website and see if I can. Find it. <laughs> yeah, you see if you can find it. Yeah, you'll find it. I'm yes, sure. it's, it's it's in our clearance section over here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, I know we, we talked about your dog portraits. What is your favorite thing to paint? Oh, my favorite, favorite thing to paint? Um, usually light. <laughs> I know that sounds really stupid. And, and it's, uh, that's the biggest thing that draws me into any painting, anything, is uh, the quality of light. Uh, usually shadows, good, big, long shadows. Even if you're painting a dog and stuff, I love, you know, hard shadows. I like uh, strong light, uh, even if I'm doing a landscape or if I'm doing, uh, you know, people or, you know, a still life. Uh, I really think uh, that's the things that draws me in is the lighting. Uh, hmm. My, but the uh, favorite thing, yeah, I, I am all over the place. Uh, it depends what I'm not painting, I think, because usually I go through things like I'm painting horses, tons of horses, 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 horses. I get so sick and tired of painting horses. Now I'll go into, I'll paint landscapes, 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 clear my palette with landscapes. Now I'll come back and paint dogs. And then I'll go back and paint landscapes. To clear, just, I paint all over the place, I guess. That's what I, think. I like everything. <laughs> Well, I, love I don't that. paint people that much. I, people are always, you know, I think uh, they take too much. They take so much time. And I'm one of those guys that you got, I got, I need to I get too much coffee. Uh, and I <laughs> paint very fast and I want to get it done with. And um, painting people, you've got to just concentrate on. Dogs, uh, you know, are, are always fun because of uh, their you know, they have, like they like I said before, they have lots of things to look at uh, and uh, concentrate on. And, you know, you don't have to be exact. <laughs> when you're painting a person, you know, uh, portraits and people, you, being exact uh, is, is more important than almost than anything else. And when I'm painting a dog, I get to ex I get to really do brush experiments and really make uh, make my marks. And that's that's what I get a kick out of. It's trying to come up with a combination of brush strokes to make hair, make a long flowing tail or something annoying, figuring out, figuring that out where um, I don't really like making skin color too much. It's always, that's so much blending. I don't blend too much. I just kind of like get the big stuff in, go. <clears throat> Awesome. Did I answer that you question? have a couple of paintings. I know we saw the one behind you. You have a couple close by you could hold up. Are they wet? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I, you know, they're always wet. Close by, they're always wet. Yeah. Uh, this is the one uh, you guys you have up on your site. Yes. All right now, this is Dolly. I I'll love bring it in. You can you can look at. Oh, see, I can't see anything. But uh, she was uh, funny. She was sent in to me. Uh, when I was doing my uh, my monthly my month of uh, dog paintings and stuff, and uh, I totally uh, you know she was when she, when she got sent in I was already booked, and I kept going I I like this paint this photo she sent in so much but uh, so I just waited till I had a, like a uh, another dog uh, uh, 
you know, workshop and brought her out for that. And uh, she turned out pretty great. I really, this is kind of like the hair I was talking about right here. This is the really interesting stuff, painting strokes to figure out and get the, get them to work out. Um, there's that one. Uh, I also have this little guy. This is uh, Moss. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, Moss. Uh, he was, I painted him on, this is just like uh, canvas sheets, basically centurion oil prime canvas sheets. And I just tape them to boards and stuff and they save space. You know, if I, I'm not sure what I'm going to end up doing with it and things like that. So uh, that works out really great for painting too. If you got, you want to save space is using canvas sheets like this. I mean, it's really good linen. Uh, it's the same stuff they used back in here on this stuff. And then you just glue it down afterwards. Uh, this is just taped on, taped on in the back of a old bad painting. That's one of my favorite, fun little one. That's for a lady out in, in the UK. I got to send that to her uh, when I finally glue it back down. <laughs> uh, always something, I tell you. Uh, well, let's see. Who else do I got here? Uh, oh, I got, I did this one not too pretty not too long ago too this is some goldens this is again some uk hill walkers uh dogs and uh i just love the light this is what i was i think i was talking about the light yeah. and stuff it's all about that i mean uh, if, if i would if you would have saw this before uh i put that light in you would just said it, it's a piece of crap that nothing's there it's uh it's not that interesting and that's kind of like what I work towards is my, my art looking like crap. <laughs> <laughs> when you look up close to a piece of mine and stuff, I want you to look at it. When you look at it and you just see the brush strokes and stuff, and you go it's, up close, it looks like crap. But you take one step back, it comes into focus. Two steps back, it becomes the painting. That's where I want you, you know, want my art to be. I want to look almost uh, abstract in front, in front of you when you start to look at the strokes, how I uh, work my strokes next to each other and uh, the angles of the strokes. And then as you stand back, the painting should come into focus better and better and better and stuff. So that's that's kind of goofy look idea. I, I love it. Uh, the, the light is absolutely incredible. I mean, it really, uh, really is. Well, you know, I could, you know, I have two goldens. They will always pose for me. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you just give them a dog treat and they'll be happy. So I have plenty of uh, dog paint, dog uh, photos to work from. So I'll def definitely find a good one for everybody. And I'll, I'll give it to you. And uh, if anybody want, you know, can wants to follow along and try to keep up, uh, they can, you know, that's the thing yes, about the how goal. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. I paint a little differently than a lot of people too, though. I think um, I, I work by the idea of when I paint, I'm painting, and uh, I don't I don't stop. I don't mix colors when I'm painting that much. It's very. Uh, I try to get my colors. I, I paint a very uh, uh, plain air way, where you mix your colors ahead of time, and you know get your colors right on the palette before you put them on your canvas. And it always takes about, you know, 40 minutes to make those colors in my classes and stuff. And uh, they, you know, they go along with me and they put up with me. I'm always getting yelled at about what color, what color did you just make? You know, throughout the class, <laughs> I have to stop <laughs> and tell everybody, this is what I use, this is the recipe. Go on, come on, let's keep up. Um, and then when I paint, it's almost like a totally two two different parts of the of the classes, the, these workshops and stuff. It's just it's just straight painting. It's I want to focus on the painting. I don't want to forget about where I'm painting and start mixing colors, and come back and go, oh, where does this color go? You know, mm -hmm. I got a short term memory problem here anyway, so uh, I need to paint. I need to concentrate fully on painting. And um, that's where I, 
go. So well, I know one thing I learned from you when I took your workshop, I had the privilege of taking um, a couple of weeks ago was the importance of getting the palette organized. You know, that's, that's something yeah. that I'm, I'm having to sink into my brain because it's opposite of what I've always done. And so now I'm, I'm wanting to become more organized with my palette. Well, that's the one thing is uh, even in, in any painting and stuff, you got to figure out your process even. Um, and that's what I, I try to do is try to simplify my process, uh, my process down from, from, for when I'm painting, I'm painting. I'm not thinking about mixing a color. I'm just knowing that uh, my colors are right there. I just got to put them in. I'm more thinking about the shapes I'm making or what, uh, and the brush stroke and the pressure of the brush stroke and all that, the angle of the brush stroke. And <clears throat> it's all about that. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be known for either your brush strokes or your color, um, you know, you know, basically they can, you know, your, your brush strokes are your signature and stuff. So I want to spend my time on my brush strokes and not really think about, you know, is this color right? And take my time and lollygag back and forth. A lot of times you'll find out uh, half, half the time is uh, if you got the right temperature, if you got the right value of your color, you need to write it and sort it in the right family. It, it's probably usually going to be good to go. And stuff you don't have to you know play with it too much i just want to paint <laughs> i love it i love it so i know we've got some people that are really excited about your workshop um and then lynette asked what's happening this summer for you you got something <laughs> okay. big this summer uh yeah i guess uh yeah i'm going up to uh mackinac island i got a two-week uh, uh artist residency up there so they're going to put me up for two weeks to go up there and paint horses and paint the island and stuff. And hopefully it will, it will work out. Hopefully I'll get a bunch of paintings out of there, out of the place. Uh, I paint Mackinac all, all the time. I got a gallery up there. And uh, so I feed them horse paintings constantly. And uh, when they're open, they don't, they're only open for the, for like uh, half the, not even half the year. And so you got to, get all your paintings up there right away. And then hopefully they, by the time the season's end, they're gone. And then I just got to restart replenishing, repainting and stuff. So this is going to help me a lot just to go up there and uh, see, really take it in and get a lot of good photos and stuff and fill my image bank up. And then I'll, then I'll have, then I'll just take it out in my classes. Every class I'll make them paint up at least one horse uh, class. And that way I get another painting for the, for up there. So I got method to my madness, I must say. <laughs> well, that's exciting. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what you paint from that trip. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. Well, yeah, like I said, um, I'm what I'm planning on doing is like plain air painting most of the time. So I got to get my plain air skills way up before I go there and for it because I'll be embarrassed myself. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'll be doing that. I got to start concentrating on that a little bit but that'll be fun that's always fun is painting it's fun absolutely yeah, yeah. if you're not having fun why are you doing it right <laughs> right, right. i mean that's the thing is i want to try whenever i get anybody to paint and everything else i want to show them make it easy for you i'm basically i've tried to take all the hard you know take the hard things out of it and just you know give you the raw um idea of how to paint and stuff and see where you go with that you know uh, well that's what i like to do at least what i do with my students and stuff thanks lynette <laughs> so lynette i can tell the only lynette, one here lynette you one are one of your favorite one students <laughs> one of your <laughs> regulars yes so She's tell really us about good. um where can we find you on social media how can people find out more about your classes that you hold and <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I am at jameswansonfineart.com. Uh, I do that. And I also artist James Swanson on uh, social media, on uh, on Instagram. I do, I do a lot of Instagram things. And a lot of times on Instagram, I, I'll, I have my, I, my little iPad right next to me. 
another broken iPad, but it's good for recording. So that's when I do my little uh, short paintings, you know, my my quick uh, paintings and stuff. You can see from my beginning of my painting to the end of the painting in like 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, I put those up on Instagram in a lot of the movies and stuff. And uh, you can find me here on uh, on Facebook is James Swanson. I think that's all met at. I, I do have a professional page of James Swanson Fine Art on on Facebook, but uh, I don't really use it that much. It seems like I don't get I get more on my regular name than I more interest. So um, yeah, awesome. And uh, yeah, you can find my if you want to take classes from me. I don't know why you would, but if you <laughs> do want to learn painting, like painting. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, you're gonna get 30 minutes of stand up with me. I want you to know that whenever I work, and I'm gonna give you at least 30 minutes of it. You get to get like 20 minutes of painting, maybe, you know, and that's about it. But then you're on your own. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can find me on my Facebook page or uh, my website. You can go there uh, in my online classes there. You can find anything from old classes. You can pay for it, look, watch them, and you get the photo. You get everything. And you get the commentary, uh, and then uh, you also get this stuff. I'll put up, you know, even this workshop we're going to be up doing and stuff. You can find find it there too. When uh, I get all the links and stuff, we'll put it together for you. Yes, awesome. Well, I'm really excited, and I can't wait for your workshop. I know we're going to learn so much from you, and. It's, it's just going to be. Oh, put the pressure on. Right <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, no, thank you no so much, James, for being here today and for being our spotlight artist for June. And um, I know we'll see more um, from you up until your workshop. And, and so if anybody wants to sign up, the link is in the comments. And um, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. And I'm, I'm excited for James' workshop on uh, June 14th and 15th. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, Thank James. You. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you soon. All right.